Good morning. We're covering breaking news right off the top at 11 o'clock. Lee County deputies are conducting an investigation in Lehigh Acres. They've taped off, taped off a home at the corner of Rutgers and Sanford Streets. That is where we find NBC2's Joe Petrello. Joe, what have you confirmed from deputies? Well, I've been talking to deputies on scene, and right now they tell me they can't really tell me anything about what's going on here. I was speaking to the deputy in this vehicle here. He is one of two LCSO vehicles over here right now. You see the lights flashing down there at that one. Uh, so right now, really all we know is that deputies are paying special attention to that house over there. They have it taped off completely. There's also an LCEC truck over there as well. So we're still working on confirming what is going on here with this investigation, what it's all about. There's been all kinds of hearsay going around with neighbors, but information that we are still trying to get confirmed with deputies. And when we have that information, we'll be sure to give it to you on the air and on our NBC2 app. I'm reporting live in Lehigh Acres. Joe Petrello, NBC2. All right, Joe Petrello first on with that breaking news at 11. New this morning, a switch away from signals. That is what drivers can expect in downtown Fort Myers. The city is removing and replacing several stoplights with four way stop signs. NBC2 Shannon Clo is in our newsroom to explain the changes. Shannon, good morning. Good morning, Chad. And as people are gearing up to head out for their lunch breaks, you got to be sure to hit those brakes as you're heading downtown. Most intersections will turn into four way stops. Crews will be out there until the end of the year, converting traffic lights into stop signs. The decision comes after months of studies done conducted by engineers and planners. As you drive down 2nd Street, three of those intersections will be changing. Some downtown drivers say this will help slow speeders down, while others say the change is just chaotic. Well, I think they're trying to control the traffic a little bit because it, people do go by here very quickly, very fast sometimes. Well, I think it's a little confusing right now. I mean, they're doing it at the wrong time of the season. One stoplight staying the same is at the intersection of Monroe Street. And for a full list of all of the changes, you can download our NBC2 News app. Live in the newsroom, Shannon Clo, NBC2. I think they should be able to vote. You know, after you pay your, your debt to society, you should be able to vote. Convicted felons who have paid their debt may be one step closer to being able to vote again. If Amendment 4 passes in November, more than 1.5 million ex-felons will have their rights restored. In Fort Myers, City Councilwoman Teresa Watkins Brown has requested that the city vote on a resolution supporting Amendment 4. That vote will take place in a couple hours. NBC2's Ashley Dyer is live in the control room on what you need to know before you head to the polls. Ashley. Well, we are just about three weeks away from elections. Florida has 13 million registered voters, and they're the ones who will make the decision on whether or not to pass Amendment 4. Florida is one of few states that still doesn't let felons vote. This is something that almost every other state already allows. The conditions of the amendment require a former felon to have completed their sentence in entirety, including restitution, fines, and parole. Now, not all ex-felons would get to vote if Amendment 4 passes. The law excludes those convicted of murder or any felony sex crimes. Some people we spoke with saying they hope the amendment is voted in. Once they did their crime and, and, and they paid, you know, go to jail and they did their time, uh, if people don't give them a job, what else is there to do? Go back to what they was doing before. On November 6th, voters will make their decision on whether or not to pass Amendment 4. Live in the control room, Ashley Dyer, NBC2. Ashley, thank you. Cape Coral residents will soon find out if algae toxins are airborne. Today, FGCU researchers are mailing filters up to Yale University. Those filters have been collecting algae particles for the last several weeks. The test results could come back in one week. There is a strong chance we have people watching us right now who typically don't get the chance. Students in Collier and Lee counties are out of school today. Both districts are having teacher planning days. Collier County students also have an early dismissal tomorrow. And in Charlotte County, teacher planning day is set for this Friday. Sears is sinking. The previously dominant retail chain is filing for bankruptcy. They announced the move early this morning. NBC2 anchor Brenna Wyke is here in the studio with their reasoning for closing even more stores. Chad Amanda, Sears has been struggling for a decade. In fact, the last time the company turned a profit was 2010. Today, a $134 million debt was due and Sears couldn't pay up. That's why they filed for bankruptcy and announced the closing of another 142 stores nationwide. CEO Eddie Lampert is stepping down immediately. While liquidation sales are set to begin soon, 
It's unclear if this major scale down can save the very old retailer or if the end of Sears is imminent. Specifics on which stores will close by the end of the year have not been announced yet. The Sears at Coastland Center in Naples is already scheduled to close next month, while the store at Edison Mall in Fort Myers remains open, at least for now. Amanda. Brenna, thank you. An investigation underway this morning after a fire broke out at the Palm Vista apartment complex in Fort Myers. Well, this is video of some of the damage. The fire happened just off Central Avenue. People living in the complex reported smoke in the laundry room. Firefighters say that that vending machine you see caught on fire. They quickly put it out. No one was injured, but they don't know what or who started the fire. One driver is safe this morning after being pulled from a burning car. This all happening on the northbound side of I-75 near the Jones Loop exit in Charlotte County. A witness says the hood of the car is charred. Florida Highway Patrol told us the engine was the source of the fire. They tell us that a driver was pulled from the car and no one was hurt. There's an update to a crime alert in Lee County where the sheriff's office continues looking for the gunman who killed two people at the Bell Tower shops. It's been nearly a week since the bullets were fired. A 56 year old man and his 22 year old stepson were killed leaving a birthday party. Detectives say they were gunned down while walking in the parking lot outside of TGI Fridays. Any more with information, even if you think it's a small detail, it could be valuable. You are urged to call Crime Stoppers and you could receive a cash reward. In a separate case of violent crime, two other men killed last week outside a different Fort Myers shopping plaza, Sun Gold Plaza, sits at the corner of US 41 and Hanson Street. Currently, investigators are searching for this car. Take a close look. They believe this is what the suspect was driving when shots were fired from inside the vehicle through a business. A man found guilty of murdering a Lee County father of six will be sentenced today. Tyrone Morse died after he was shot in the Harlem Heights neighborhood. A jury found Timothy Dorch guilty of second degree murder in that case. Dorch faces life in prison, but a judge will hear from both sides of the case at this afternoon's sentencing. The judge will then determine the punishment they see fit for the murder. And two men accused in a 2017 Lee County murder will be sentenced today as well. Detectives say the victim, Jonathan DeLisi's, was shot just off of Three Oaks Parkway while he was driving. Last month, the jury found Dejerian Stewart and Christopher Ward guilty for his murder. Stewart and Ward followed DeLisi's, who was driving a known drug dealer, after a drug sale got canceled. Both men faced life in prison. From your Cape Coral News team this afternoon, this morning, happening this week, developers will discuss the fate of a controversial apartment complex. The developers want to build on 20 acres of land off Savonia Parkway in South Cape. Right now, structures only 38 feet high can be built. The developer needs to get approval to build higher than that level. People can voice their opinions at a public hearing set for this Wednesday. It's 1108. I'm Stacey Deffenbaugh here in the Alert Center uh, monitoring uh, social media and live feeds from all over the country. I want to show you a new tweet from uh, the president. Jasmine's our director. Jasmine, if you could pull this up here for everybody to see. President tweeting this out on our way to Florida in Georgia. We know the president and the first lady right now uh, headed to our area, or not our area, but Florida to see the damage uh, from that uh, massive storm. Uh, one of the hardest hit areas, uh, Mexico Beach. We know that uh, the fatality Fatalities rose uh, overnight, and uh, we'll continue to monitor the president and the first lady's uh, visit today, and I'll pass along updates here from the Alert Center. Certainly, pictures and video don't do it justice. You really do need to see it up close. Stacy, thank you. World leaders, including President Trump, are closing ranks today against the Saudi government, calling for a credible investigation into the death of a Washington Post columnist. The president says there will be severe punishment if the Saudis were involved in the journalist's disappearance. Saudi officials promise to retaliate if the U.S. takes action against the government. Florida U.S. Senator Marco Rubio is weighing in. If this is proven to be true, there is going to be a response from Congress. It's going to be nearly unanimous. It's going to be swift, and it's going to go pretty far, and that could include arms sales. President Trump says he may protect that multi-million dollar Saudi arms deal, though, because American jobs depend on it. Saudi officials deny any involvement in the journalist's disappearance, but have offered no evidence he'd left them alive. Memorial services were held this weekend for eight of the people who died in a limousine crash earlier this month. The group of 17 friends from New York State were celebrating the 30th birthday of Amy Steenberg. Her brother-in-law, three sisters, their husbands were among those killed in that accident. The victims also included the limo driver and two people who were walking in the area at the time. Nauman Hussein, the son of the limo company's owner, is charged with criminally negligent homicide. 
Sarasota police officers are investigating a report of a suspicious package turned up at the post office there. The package was found on Saturday outside of a post office in Sarasota. It was later determined the package wasn't hazardous, though. It is still, though, unclear who sent that package. Straight ahead at 11, a close call in Florida why a pilot had to land in one homeowner's yard. Plus, check it out. A pig takes deputies on a wild chase, what they use to get it to safety. And it's going to be a really hot day today. In fact, near record temperatures in southwest Florida. I check if we could see a little bit of rain to cool things off coming up right after this. <laughs> testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Our um, forecast today looks at pretty hot, so the temperature is hitting. We're all excited about lower humidity, but I was checking all of our things and the humidity level, it's not going to be below like 70%. For yeah, the that was a one-time deal there Saturday morning with some lower humidity, but since the winds have already switched around, it's, it's back to normal now this week. A great weekend, a little on the hot side. Yeah. Did we, did we set a record, by the way? Uh, I think we the, tied one we, yesterday we here were in the close. city of Fort Myers. We're going to be very, very close though once again today, but before we talk about what's happened, I want to talk about what happened last night. If you're ever driving around at sunset, at one point you're probably going to see me taking pictures, but this was a perspective last night from Bonita Springs uh, over the bridge that goes over top of New Pass Great and it's shot. looking toward that big thunderstorm that was very close to Marco Island last night. If you ever see something like this and you see that anvil type of shape feature, that's always an indicator as to what direction the storm is moving because the winds in that part of the atmosphere are what push around the showers and downpours and thunderstorms. So the next time you see a thunderstorm cut that looks like that, you can tell exactly where it's going based on what the, the shape of the storm looks like. I ran the uh, live radar back a few minutes ago as to what things looked like last night. And that thunderstorm cloud was about 30 
34,000 feet tall. So we've seen, you know, from where I was sitting, 25 miles away, uh, pretty cool stuff there, especially when things line up during sunset and things really uh, get illuminated pretty nicely. In the meantime, though, right now, of course, a little blend of sun and cloud action here in the city of Fort Myers. Temperatures today are going to be very warm. We're already back in the middle 80s, and this afternoon, we're topping out back in the lower 90s. 92, in fact, is the forecast high in Fort Myers and Cape Coral. 91 today in Estero and Naples, and 94 a possibility in communities between Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. And that's near record territory today. In fact, here in the city of Fort Myers, 92 degrees is the current record on the books, and this is held since 1990. So yet again today, just like yesterday, temperatures will be up around the uh, record time territory during the afternoon. For the time being, NBC2 first alert live Doppler radar has no rain for us to track up and down the west coast of the state. And for the most part today, the rain coverage should be pretty hard to come by. There will be a few isolated showers popping up late this afternoon, early on this evening, and riding along the winds that are out of the southeast here. But rain coverage as a whole is not looking too widespread today. So yes, there's the chance of a passing shower or a passing storm today, but many of us will actually trend fairly dry during the second half of the afternoon. Boating forecast with all this in mind looks pretty good. East to southeast winds at 10 knots, one to two foot seas in the Gulf of Mexico. Just a light chop on the inland of bays, rivers and waterways. And by the way, if you're headed out to the Gulf today, water temperature off of Fort Myers Beach as of this morning has been measured at 84 degrees. Now looking longer term here, the, the fairly dry weather we'll see today will begin to give way to a few more showers during the afternoon hours on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Temperature wise, though, it's going to be warm this week. Most of us will see highs top out in the lower 90s all the way through Thursday and Friday before we see a return to somewhat normal temperatures by the weekend. Today's one of the first days when overnight lows drop back into the 60s typically, so those nighttime temperatures will be way above average tonight, tomorrow night only dropping back near 75 degrees. With this in mind, of course, it's still hurricane season. A check of an area to watch that's near Central America coming up your direction at 1145. All right, Rob Dunn, we'll see you then. Here's a consumer alert happening today. BJ's Wholesale Club is open to everyone today. Anyone can shop at the club without a membership through November the 4th. The Welcome One and All event lets shoppers experience the Wholesale Club with its new digital conveniences and online shopping options. This week, Krispy Kreme is opening their Cleveland Avenue location in Fort Myers. You can get your favorite donut starting at 6 tomorrow morning, followed by a ribbon cutting ceremony hosted by the Greater Fort Myers Chamber of Commerce. That's at 10. If you're hungry and you want a burger, well, here you go. According to QSR Magazine, Burger King is the fastest drive through chain in America. Between the time you order the food to the moment you get to the window and receive it, according to this study, it only took 3 minutes and 13 seconds. They say that McDonald's and Chick-fil-A are the most popular, but in this study, they came in the slowest at the drive through Dunkin' Donuts came in second place. If electric car magnate Elon Musk gets his way, there could be a Tesla-branded tequila in the works. Tesla filed a trademark application last week for Tesla Kila, which is described as a distilled agave liquor. However, the filing was made based on, quote, intent to use because the product isn't actually ready yet. Musk announced it on Twitter. The product is in the works. He also posted an image of what the bottle will look like, complete with a red and tan label emblazoned with Tesla's indelible logo. Tesla Kila actually started as a part of an April Fool's joke in which Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla had gone bankrupt. A boat crashes near the Sanibel Causeway, sending four people flying into the water. This happened just before five on Sunday at Fisherman Key. We talked to Bob Fugate, who works for CETO. He pulled the two men and two women out of the water. He says the group was coming out of the mouth of the Caloosahatchee River into the intercoastal waterway when they hit a wake from a bigger boat. Um, yeah, once they got aboard, um, I think it finally kind of sunk in exactly what happened, and they knew that they were they were going to be okay. Uh, they, you know, people start, you know, breaking down a little bit. All four people were taken to a hospital in Lee County with minor injuries. Witnesses say someone saw what looked like beer bottles on the boat. Deputies and FWC are investigating. I can honestly say I've never heard of anything like this. Deputies in California lure a pig with Doritos. <laughs> and they've got the video to prove it. How great is that? The pig is about the size of a, a small horse. It was roaming a neighborhood over the weekend, and when deputies arrived, they spotted the pig, grabbed the chips from a lunch bag, and made a trail <laughs> to help bring in the pig. Luckily, the pig was hungry, but when aren't they hungry? I know. The pig and my dog. My dog loves Doritos, so it must be a thing. I wonder if they were Cool Ranch or the, the, the cheddar flavor. That makes a huge difference. Big difference, but <laughs> either way. Oh, it was cheddar. It was cheddar. All right. And the pig's okay. <laughs> okay, and look at this five-foot-long giant python. It 
dropped in on employees at a bank in China. Oh my gosh, no. Okay, so it dropped through the bank ceiling during a morning meeting and then slithered behind a sofa. Oh yeah, got goosebumps. <laughs> Animal experts believe the python was hunting for food when it fell into the building. Wildlife experts were able to bag the python. They took it to a wildlife protection center and no one was hurt. And it's some wild video. We've got <laughs> something else you would only see in a movie. A hell of a crash. Didn't know what it was, but it just boom. A plane crashes right into a house. An Arizona community shocked after a small plane crashes into a home. Now investigators are looking into what caused the plane to go down in the first place. A hell of a crash. Didn't know what it was, but it just boom. And then the front glass went flying out into the front yard. Doug Denham sitting just feet away when a single engine Cessna ripped through his pace in home, hurling parts and possessions all over his backyard. Walked into the bedroom, which used to be a bedroom, and now it's out in the backyard, and uh, so is the bathroom, and so is the walk-in closet. Instantly, he says, neighbors came running to help. Well, everybody didn't know what the hell to do. In the darkness, Doug dissecting through the debris. That's when he knew. There was nothing moving in, in, that, in that mess. The FAA says it's still unclear what caused the plane to go down. People in the area say they heard it soaring low, then the crash, and silence. It was scary and emotional, but, you know, you think about it, and it's like... 300 yards away, it would have been my house. Doug returning Sunday morning to salvage what he could. I found my cat in hiding in its back bedroom, which I was very concerned about, naturally, and picked up my medicine and a few other things. With still so many questions out there, had he been just a few steps away, 
who knows if he'd be standing here. You know, people say, oh, divine this and that. Well, you know, who knows? We're also told that a passenger was on the plane, but there's no word on their condition. You can see this plane made an unexpected landing on a driveway in Melbourne Beach, Florida. The pilot had to make an emergency landing and had to find a safe place to get down to, to the ground. Apparently, the engine stopped working about 1,200 feet up in the air. No one was injured. The FAA is investigating what caused the malfunction. In a really scary moment for one Brevard County, Florida driver, a piece of plywood slices their windshield in half on a highway. You have to look at these just incredible pictures. They were taken by the Brevard County Fire and Rescue Team. That car was driving down I-95 on Sunday when that piece of plywood flew off of a pickup truck and right into their windshield. We're told that the driver was not injured and didn't even ask to get medical treatment at the hospital. Looking ahead, auditions will wrap up tonight on NBC's The Voice, and they go directly into the start of the battle rounds. Man, they've got some pipes. It's always a bit tricky, though, for the coaches to decide who they want to pair up in the battle rounds because they're working with artists they've only just met. Frustrating, because once they actually do battle, you're like, oh, man, like this is not what I thought. But it's easier to pair them because you don't have as much invested. Don't forget, NBC2 is your home for The Voice. The show airs at 8 o'clock tonight, followed by an all-new episode of Manifest. The president demanding answers after a Saudi journalist disappears. Now the king of Saudi Arabia is denying any involvement. Plus ahead at 11.30, President Trump about to tour the ravaged, torn panhandle. After thousands remain without power, we will take you live to Panama City. My check, my check, my check, my check. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. My check, my check, my check, my check, my check, my check. Yeah, dialing down, dialing down. My check, my check, my check, my check. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. My check, my check, my check, my check. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. My check, my check, my check, my check. Omar. What? Omar. One more time? CNN live shot. Oh, okay. Not us. Okay. It's the start of stone crab season, and trappers are out on the water setting their traps already. But will red tide make it a broken season? Just ahead on NBC2 at 11. Please move, man. The video going viral today. A woman stops a man from getting inside his own home. Plus, the royal family is getting a little bigger. The new announcement from Kensington Palace. Well, stone crab season starts today, and those crabbers, they're already out in the water checking on their traps. But some worry that red tide has left a little in those traps for them to catch, and the season could be a bust. NBC2's Jesse Pagan is live in Naples at Kelly's Fish House restaurant where crabbers left from this morning. Jesse. This stack of traps right here on the dock and dry land, and they, they say they say that if these are empty out there, the ones that are out there, these will also stay on dry land too. Crabbers left out early this morning to check on traps that are already out there in the water and rebate some that are still, uh, rebate some that might have stone crabs in them. But crabbers aren't that optimistic. They're worried red tide is leaving them with little to catch. They say they set their trap traps miles off the shore past red tide blooms, but some say they may even have to call it a season today and leave crabbing for another way to pay the bills.
I had a small red tide last year there at the end, but it didn't affect me. I mean, I was I had a really good year last year. So that's why I wanted to gear up, you know, you, you have a bigger year. And it just seems like, I mean, everything I've checked so far doesn't look good. FWC's latest report shows low background concentrations of red tide off of Collier County's coast. And crabbers are hoping it stays that way. They say they will find out by the end of the day today if this will be a good season to harvest or a broken season for stone crabs. Live in Naples, Jesse Pagan, NBC2. Lee County is pushing to improve tourism in the southwest part of the state. The county commission is expected to accept more than $75,000 from Visit Florida this week. Just as the red tide troubles off the coast begin to dissipate, that money will go to the county's visitor and convention bureau, where it will then go toward advertising and marketing. Currently, the bureau will spend it on social media and for ads on the New York Times website. And here we have the most recent results from red tide testing via FWC. You can see the east coast of the state really struggling with the highest concentrations of red tide on the southwest Florida coastline. This is positive for us. You see a lot of those gray dots. Let's zoom in even closer so you can really get perspective in our southwest part of Florida. The, all those gray dots mean that they're either picking up on very low or, or low levels of red tide or that red tide isn't present at all. And President Trump is expected to arrive any minute in the panhandle. In this video here, the president departing Joint Base Andrews on his way to Florida after deadly Hurricane Michael tore through the panhandle. His visit to the hurricane zone comes while hundreds of thousands of businesses and homes are still waiting to get their electricity restored. Omar Jimenez is live at 1130 in Panama City, where the president is expected to arrive at any moment. Yeah, Chad and Amanda, President Trump and First Lady Melania are in the air on the way down here to Florida. Now, this comes five days after Hurricane Michael initially made landfall. And the time since then, FEMA says there have been more than 400 rescues and assists. But at the same time, there are still many people unaccounted for, especially in Mexico Beach, the epicenter, where the strongest storm to ever hit the Florida panhandle hit. This is the first time I've seen anything like this even close. Days after Hurricane Michael slammed into the Florida panhandle, people are still suffering. Widespread destruction and lack of electricity has many survivors living in dire conditions. We got a long way to go, yeah. bottom line. Um, but we're going to continue to push forward and try to do everything that we can. People in hard hit areas have been waiting in long lines just to get essentials like food and water. With supplies low, some people have resorted to looting. This hit so hard and so fast that the different aspect of human nature is going to come out and people are going to do anything to survive. Hundreds of thousands of customers still without power in seven states from Florida to Virginia. We're down to a little less than 200,000 people without power. Um, the, but, so that's, we're making progress every day on that. On Sunday, President Trump approved the disaster declaration in Georgia for counties that took a direct hit from Michael. Monday, President Trump is expected to get a first-hand look at hurricane damage in the region as people along the storm's path of destruction try to regain a sense of normalcy. And we're going to help each other out, and uh, we're going to get through this. Now, another complicating factor in this is that there are thousands of students whose futures are still unclear. And that's because many of their schools look like what used to be this middle school here behind me. In fact, here in Bay County, which includes Panama City, officials say that the majority of their 26,000 students are either displaced or have schools that are just too unsafe to return to. They're expected to have a meeting later today about what exactly they can do to get these students back in class. And also, as we understand, just in the past few moments, President Trump has landed here in the region, so we do expect him to tour some of this, what I'm sure will be eye-opening damage for him in the near future. Chad, Amanda. All right, Omar, uh, Stacey Defenbaugh here actually in the Alert Center, and I want to show you pictures. Omar mentioned the president's landing moments ago. Uh, Jasmine, if you could pull up a SAT-30 here. Omar mentioned that, and there are the live pictures. I just watched Air Force One uh, touchdown here at uh, the Eagland Air Force Base in uh, Okaloosa County in Florida. Uh, while his report, while his uh, story was uh, airing there and you were watching it at home, I watched uh, Governor Rick Scott, the director of FEMA, a uh, walk out to uh, greet the president and the first lady. I don't control this camera, by the way, so uh, I can't uh, do anything about the picture, but uh, we know Air Force One. I did watch it to uh, land there and I'll continue to monitor uh, these live pictures and uh, maybe uh, I'll let our producer know when we see the 
president and the first lady, and we can uh, come back to me here in the Alert Center. I'll keep an eye on things for you, Chad, Amanda. All right, Stacey Deffenbaugh, live coverage in the Alert Center. Governor Rick Scott is back in Tallahassee in the state capitol this morning after surveying damage across our state's panhandle. The governor was joined by the FEMA director, Brock Long. The two were asked if they expected the death toll to rise, but both men declined to make any predictions. Florida's governor says about 17,000 linemen are working right now 24 seven to restore power to affected communities. Scott even talked about things he'd like to do differently if another storm hits before he leaves office. If there's another storm, I'm going to get generators out faster. <laughs> That's one thing that the uh, is that to get these lights back on faster with, um, for the stoplights, I think that would be that would be helpful. Governor Rick Scott estimates 1800 people are working search and rescue missions to find survivors. His opponent in the Senate race, Bill Nelson, made his way to the panhandle to survey damage as well. He was there Sunday, stopping by emergency operations centers in Bay and Jackson counties. Nelson says there are many rural residents who are emergency workers and still who there are many rural residents that emergency workers still have not been able to reach. One Southwest Florida organization is helping the Panhandle recover after Hurricane Michael. Owen Ames Kimball, or Oak, they're sending a semi truck to Panama City with supplies. Today it will, it will start collecting donations like paper towels, toiletries, feminine hygiene products, and tools. The project manager says it is important to help our fellow Floridians in need. That's why they're calling this project, It's Our Turn. I know how vast our resources is as far as clientele and just, just our, our lists of subs and contractors. It's, and I, once that hurricane hit, I thought, you know, what if we just turn that horsepower and point it in that direction? Well, you can donate today through Friday from 8 to 5 at Oaks locations in Fort Myers and Naples. We have the exact addresses and what they're collecting on our website, NBC-2.com. Cleanup at the Fort Myers sludge site on South Street continues today. Also happening, an update on the $3.2 million project. Fort Myers leaders are going to talk about the next steps in this. The plan is for anything, anything toxic to be moved to a treatment facility in Citrus County. After that, it's headed up to Alabama. What's not toxic will be recycled and then used for projects within the city. The driver of a semi truck is dead after veering off an exit ramp in Fort Lauderdale. FHP says a 29 year old driver was going off the exit ramp connecting Florida's turnpike to 595. He crashed into a barrier wall and fell to his death. He was lugging a 53 foot trailer behind him. The truck flipped and landed on the grass. A two year old boy found wandering alone outside wearing only a dirty diaper. This happened in Daytona Beach. The child's mom, Natasha Johnson, She's 22. She was arrested when she came back home, along with the child's 44 year old grandma, Berlinda Rose. The Florida Department of Children and Family, they're currently conducting an investigation. Here's a developing story we're watching regarding a Florida native still in detention after she was barred from entering Israel as a graduate. Lara Alkusim has been held in detention since arriving in Israel October the 2nd. Today, she's trying to appeal the Israeli Supreme Court. The 22 year old has a valid student visa. She wanted to do graduate studies in human rights at Jerusalem's Hebrew University, but security officers barred her from entering the country because of her role as the president of a small local chapter of Students for Justice in Palestine at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defended the action. Every country and every democracy uh, and many democracies have uh, special arrangements where they decide who to let in and who not to let in. If you come in and you're uh, virulently against America and you try to come into the United States, there's a good chance you won't be let in. The Israeli Supreme Court suspended the student's deportation pending a discussion of this case. A large study finds the vaccine for HPV, a sexually transmitted virus, does not lead to riskier sexual behavior. The research is based on more than 300,000 girls living in British Columbia. British Columbia, Canada. The province has a publicly funded HPV vaccination program for girls in sixth grade. Researchers say there has been no evidence that the program prompted unsafe or early sexual activity. Here in the U.S., the CDC says all kids should get the HPV vaccine at 11 or 12 years old. Are you putting yourself at a greater risk for cancer? Health experts say the answer could depend on your diet. Lindsay Martin explains why on today's Health Matters. <laughs> Your choices here can greatly impact your conversations here. Hello. Hello. 
there are studies that people who have higher intakes of fruits and vegetables have lower rates of cancer, diabetes, obesity. Studies show patients who are considered obese have a greater risk of developing cancer. There's no one food that strictly eliminates or kills cancer, but there are a lot of foods that can help prevent it in the first place. Those foods are mostly fruits and vegetables and whole grains, but health experts say things like coffee and tea have also been proven to help fight cancer. A lot of these foods um, relate to your overall health. Um, like I said, the dark leafy greens, the fruits, the vegetables, and eating them while you're going through treatment really helps to nourish your body the right way. That's because fruits and vegetables are high in fiber, vitamins, and minerals. I think that the key is kind of phytochemicals. So phytochemicals are phyto, so they come from plants. A lot of them have these kind of cancer fighting qualities because they eliminate free radicals and help you to keep your cellular health optimal, which is good against cancer. Whether they're fresh, frozen, or canned, it's important to get as many fruits and vegetables in your diet as possible. And that's really one of the best ways to, you know, keep your blood sugar low, keep your weight stable, and prevent cancer. It's also important to limit processed foods and sugar. It is just about limiting your risk of these diseases so that you can live a longer, healthier, happier life. For Lee Health, I'm Lindsay Morton. Keep it here on NBC2. Still to come, a viral video making the rounds this Monday. You're going to hear from a man denied access into his own apartment complex. And in less than five minutes, your complete update on what's happening in the tropics, including some analysis on a new feature that's spinning towards Central America. Well, every day during hurricane season about this time, we like to set aside a few minutes and just bring you up to speed with what's uh, happening and what's not happening in the tropics. And of course, as you know, in the wake of Hurricane Michael, there's no systems, no organized systems anywhere close to us here in South Florida. But there is a disturbance that's across the western side of the Caribbean Sea that Central America is going to have to watch very closely. You'll notice on the visible satellite imagery, there's a big cluster of clouds uh, here just off the coast of, uh, of Honduras and uh, Nicaragua. When you turn 
turn on the enhanced satellite, though, you'll notice that there are some cooler cloud tops inside these. Uh, those are indicated by where you see shades of darker orange and yellow. And essentially, when the cloud tops are colder, it means the cloud tops are a lot taller in the atmosphere. So it's a bigger shower or a bigger downpour, a bigger thunderstorm. As of right now, this is not an organized uh, tropical system, but it is moving toward the west and the northwest. And the Hurricane Center is saying there's at least a 40% chance that this could spin up into a tropical depression inside the next uh, two, three days as it moves toward the west and the northwest. So this is not a system that we have to be concerned about, but it could bring some very flooding rains to parts of Central America. Uh, even as far west as Belize could see the impacts of this uh, tropical disturbance over the next uh, five, six days as it all kind of slides into Central America toward the west and the northwest. Otherwise, apart from this disturbance in the Caribbean, there's nothing for us to worry about right now in the Gulf of Mexico. Things looking very quiet across the Bahamas into the north of Cuba. And then over the wider Atlantic Ocean, there's one tropical wave right here that's uh, at one point in time has been watched a little closely by the Hurricane Center. Odds of development right now are at 0%, so nothing to be concerned about. But let's just remember, of course, that hurricane season runs all the way through the month of November. So even though the state has been hit you know, multiple times by tropical weather over the past a few months, we're not quite done with hurricane season just yet. Still more than a month to go before things will really start to quiet down here, tropical weather-wise across the Atlantic Basin. In the meantime, for today, it's all about near record heat as forecast highs race to 92 today in uh, Cape Coral and Fort Myers. If we do in fact hit 92 here in Fort Myers, that would tie the record uh, for today's date, which has held all the way back since 1990, back uh, several years ago, which <laughs> seems like it's not that far ago, but 1990 was actually quite a long time ago and as of here we are sitting in 2018. All right, here we go with future cast for the day today. Winds out of the east and the southeast will give us a quick isolated shower or passing thunderstorm today, but the coverage of rain forests should stay on the isolated range of the spectrum as it's just the talk on temperatures. That's your big headline for the day today. Looking longer term here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we will uptick the rain opportunities as the wind weather pattern uh, turns more summer like here as we move through the middle of the work week. And uh, that's a bit of a bummer. Today is the first day, in fact, that climatologically, typically we see nighttime lows drop below 70, but as you'll notice in that seven day forecast, those numbers do not appear nope. anytime soon. So we're not going to see much uh, typical type weather for at least another week uh, here in Southwest Florida. High 80s, high low 90s with a lot of humidity. It's coming back. Yep. Mm. We'll see it again in a few minutes. Rob. Thank you. Breaking news, the president's on the ground in Florida off of Air Force One. Jasmine, let's uh, get right to the live pictures here. Sat 30 is where we can see the president's and the first lady. Uh, you can see the president's, uh, the first lady just behind him there in the white shirt. He's uh, talking with uh, Governor Rick Scott and other officials uh, on the ground here at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. We know the uh, president's and first lady are set to see some of the hardest hit areas like uh, Mexico Beach and areas of the Florida Panhandle that took that uh, direct hit from once was Hurricane Michael. I'll continue to monitor these live feeds and pass along updates here from the Alert Center. Right, Stacy, thank you. A Missouri woman caught on camera physically blocking a man from his own home. That video has been viewed online millions of times. Benton Blandon spoke with the man about what went down. Please move, ma'am. I can. Okay. Do you live here? I'll be honest with that question. Excuse me. The Ariane Tolls was returning home from a late night at the office. But you're blocking me. Into my building. Okay. And okay. It's my building as well, so I need you to get out of my way. Okay. What okay. unit? I don't need to say that information. So excuse me, ma'am. I'm uncomfortable. Excuse me. Okay. You can be uncomfortable. That's, that's your discretion. You're uncomfortable because you're you. A tenant who lives on the third floor of the Elder Shirt Lofts created a roadblock. I don't like the fact you have your phone in my face. Okay, I don't like the fact that you're blocking me for where I pay. All to I'm live asking at. is what you But you not I don't need to tell you that information, man. If you want to come into my building. It's not your building, you're not the owner. You pay rent. Sir, you walked up on a street. Yes. Has... Yes, and I've already buzzed in. Tolls shows a fob moves past the woman who News 4 will not name, takes an elevator to the fourth floor. The woman follows. Did this really just happen to me? And it did happen to me, so I was, I was really taken away at the moment. His cell phone video shows the woman staying on him after he uses his key to enter his downtown loft. No, have a good night, ma'am. That Don't ever do that again. You look pretty stupid on video. Have a nice night. Too and my name is Mr. Tolls. That's where News 4 met the St. Louis business owner. I was kind of blown away, like shocked, wow. I'm just glad I had my camera out because if I didn't have my camera out, I, I feel, I feel, I feel that it could have went a totally different way.
Venton Blandon reporting. Now, we have learned that the woman in that video has been fired from her job because of this incident. Keeping tabs on recovery from Hurricane Michael, Tyndall Air Force Base in our state's panhandle facing a massive rebuild in the months to come after getting ripped apart by the hurricane. The base houses 3,500 airmen. It's 12 miles east of Panama City. Michael's eye cut directly over Tyndall, and you can see in this video, it really did a number on it. Despite all of the damage the base has sustained, the Air Force Secretary, Heather Wilson, remains optimistic. We will work through the issues of the, the people issues, um, person by person, airman by airman. And when we say airman, we mean active guard, reserve, and civilian. We're all part of one team. And, uh, and right now, everybody needs to focus on their families. Yeah, quite frankly, it's just not a place where people can currently work. Water, sewer, electricity, all knocked out at Tyndall Air Force Base. It will remain that way for the foreseeable future. And take a look at this. First responders just sifting through piles of debris following the storm. Rescue crews were searching a home in Mexico Beach over the weekend, or what was a home. That property destroyed by the Category 4 storm. It was one of the most powerful hurricanes ever to hit the United States. The storm has claimed the lives of 19 people across the south. Officials say that that number, though, could climb as they continue to search for more victims. And underwater artists of all age, they used dive knives and fine carving tools to look at that, transform pumpkins into sea creatures under the sea. With their favorite marine creatures in mind, these creative scuba divers submerged 30 feet beneath the surface in the Florida Keys on Sunday. They did this to compete in the annual underwater pumpkin carving contest in the waters of Key Largo. The annual contest is scheduled each October ahead of Halloween celebrations. That takes a lot of skill. <laughs> Gotta love this. Friday night, Baring Collier High School beat Palmetto Ridge 56 to 14. And fans who stayed until the end of the game got to see this awesome drumline battle going viral this week on Facebook. Both Collier County schools have really fantastic marching bands, so it's great to see these students showing off their skills right there on the 50-yard line and battling it out. The royal family is getting a little bigger. Straight ahead, the excitement buzzing around Kensington Palace today.
The British royal family is going to be getting a little larger. Kensington Palace confirms Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, is pregnant with her first child. Markle and Prince Harry got married five months ago at Windsor Castle. Their baby is expected in the spring. Queen Elizabeth II will be the baby's great-grandmother. That's fabulous. We're all very pleased. Yeah. We knew it was coming soon. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool that she's having a baby. It's super exciting. Yeah. But they well, certainly didn't waste any time, did they? No, absolutely. So the didn't get to enjoy married life just as a couple for too long, but yeah, it'd be gorgeous with a child. Yeah. Good on them. Many people excited about this. This announcement coming hours after Harry and Meghan arrived in Sydney at the start of a 16-day visit to Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. Most parents are concerned with keeping their kids healthy, but what if you're giving them the right food and they still get sick? Stephanie Jimenez talks to doctors who say it could be the result of celiac disease. Steak or chicken or I get salad. That's not what you'd expect a typical 17-year-old to eat, but Aiden Sabat has no choice. He can't eat most fast or processed food. Aiden is among the 3 million Americans with celiac disease, a condition that can make people sick when they eat food with wheat, barley, or rye, basically anything with gluten. And doctors are seeing more cases of celiac disease. The prevalence rates of celiac disease have increased and we still don't quite understand what that what the reason for that is. But doctors do understand how to diagnose celiac disease. It involves a blood test and a biopsy. Luckily for Aiden, he's known about his celiac disease since he was three when his parents noticed that he was struggling and took him to a doctor. He was having um, stomach distension, stomach distress. Uh, he was having um, discoloration on his the enamel and his teeth. Those are common symptoms of celiac disease in children. Dr. Arun Singh is an attending gastroenterologist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. CHOP has a celiac center where children with the condition get medical care. We'll see kind of common complaints are abdominal pain, bloating. Uh, you might see some things like headaches. Uh, they're not growing well, so we call that kind of conditions like failure to thrive. All new, ahead at noon. We are covering breaking news involving a death investigation in Lehigh Acres. Back after this. Sure. Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are coming to you live from the scene in Lehigh Acres. This part of the road still blocked off by a sheriff's deputy, but you can take a look behind me. <laughs> Is this a mic check? Oh, oh boy. Mic check, one, two, three, four. Breaking right now, a scene in Lehigh Acres, deputies blocking off a home. Breaking news, global calls for an investigation.